Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Near-Infrared Fluorescent Imaging of Lymphatic Disorders. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You may have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed for you. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane, which is found at the bottom of your attendee control panel. You can send your questions in at any time during the presentation and we'll collect them and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. It's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Miguel Amore. Dr. Amore is the general and vascular surgeon, second head of phlebology and lymphology unit, the cardiovascular surgery division of the Hospital Militaire Central in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and is a staff physician at the unit of phlebology and lymphology, the Fiducian Favoloro. He is the elected president of the International Society of Lymphology and a member of the executive committee of the European Society of Lymphology and president of the Buenos Aires Society of Phlebology and Lymphology. Dr. Amore, over to you. Hi, everybody, and thank you for this kind introduction. Uh, we are working at the Militar Hospital with an, an alarm situation about the coronavirus, so uh, I will try to speak about the, the near infrared fluorescent imaging of the lymphatic disorders. Okay, we must start now. Just uh, 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 no financial disclosure. This is uh, uh, the summary of the presentation of this presentation, and the aim is to show how the fluorescent images can help to understand more about the physiopathological changes of the lymphatic system and how it helps us to <laughs> to treat uh, our lymphatic disorders. And uh, regarding the, the, the evolution of the visualization methods, uh, you can see a picture here. Uh, I don't know if you can see here. Uh, a picture of uh, on oil lymphography, and these methods had long been the choice for imaging uh, the lymphatic system described, described by John Kim in the 60s. And today we perform it in some special cases. And this method declines and the introduction of the lymphocentigraphy. Uh, you can see here uh, a picture of a lymphocentigraphy of 1975. Uh, a patient gave me some time ago. And the evolution of this, uh, the me this method, the lymphocentigraphy, uh, with uh, high resolution. You can see here the, the clinical picture and the correspondent of uh, lymphocentigraphy in the, this case of primary lymphedema and you can see all of this uh, lymphography was made by Dr. Salenga here in another another hospital, hospital uh, Rofo Hospital, if an oncology hospital. And you can see here in primary lymphedema, you can appreciate the, the dermal backflow here and the lymph node at the level of the knee. Uh, of the knee. And uh, this is the, the clinical picture of chyla reflux with the primary lymphedema. And you can see the dermal backflow and the connection with the high resolution of this type of lymphocentric today uh, the connection with the with the instance in two uh, it's another case of a uh, uh, primary lymphedema two with uh, uh, the the correspondent of the uh, lymphocentigraphy uh, with evolution, the, the lymphocentigraphy can combine actually with the SPECT CT. This is a courtesy of Dr. Sarlenga too. Uh, and this is an example of the melanoma of the skin here. Uh, and you can see two sentinel nodes uh, here in the axilla and in the groin. And when you combine with the, with the SPECT CT, it can observe, uh, can observe the retroperitoneal node too. It's so interesting. And actually, we can uh, uh, perform MR lymphography without, with or without contrast, too. Um, 
with the advancement of the science, uh, the development of the near infrared images, uh, actually we can find some device using the, this technology to see vein and lymphatic. As you can see here, the example to see the superficial vein, the corresponding anatomy specimen. You can see the superficial vein too. And with the use of near infrared vein finder, you can find this this type of, of images. It's so interesting. It's the same with the lymphatic system. It's an anatomical specimen. And when you add the near infrared fluorescent images, you can see in vivo this type of images. It's so so interesting. All methods are, are complementary and we decide we decide uh, um, which we choose depending on what we need to evaluate. It's important because it's, it's important to remark that all methods are complementary. And the ICG um, the ICG uh, lymphography, it's, it's very interesting and it's in real time with that radiation. And we can make, uh, we can make it at the office in a few minutes. And for, for me, it's, a, it's only a personal, a personal uh, concept made a revolution. We can, uh, we can detect early changes of the lymphatic vessel after a damage. Uh, you can see here uh, an scar here and a scar after stripping of the gray saphenous vein uh, for myocardial revas revascularization um, and of course the secondary lymphedema and what happened uh, with the we happen it with the lymphatic system instead uh, of a linear pattern we can appreciate the dermal backflow the dermal lymphatic as a dermal backflow and the stop at the level of the scar as you can see here the dermal backflow um, the other things to remark about this method is to do it uh, is to do it only by physiological condition. That means with a high pressure is, uh, of the tissue, the dye the dye can move. Uh, we must to reduce the edema at first. Uh, this is an example of a lymphedema of the hand, and you can see the stagnant of the dye. Um, ICG lymphography was uh, was reporting uh, was first reported in 2011 for evaluation of lymphedema. In uh, in 2011, um, the Japanese group described different pattern of dermal backflow. This pattern changed according the pathophy, uh, pathophysiology changes of the lymph flow and lymphatic vessels, uh, changed to become more sclerotic uh, with the less lymph flow. They classify into two large groups, uh, as you can see here. Linear pattern, it's normal pattern, as you can see here at, at first in the normal legs. It's a, a linear pattern and dermal backflow pattern as lymphedema progress the pattern change from the splash here from the splash to uh, the stardust and eventually to diffuse uh, this is the, the 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 latest stage of the lymphedema we can appreciate the diffuse pattern uh for me the best uh, use of this technology is to stage zero of uh, lymphedema to detect early Changes. Uh, what is the significance of stage zero? Is without any sign of the edema, any type of edema, any sign of the edema is the stage zero, and uh, this is the the, the the best example for me. As you can see here, a patient uh, with axillary lymph node dissection after a melanoma. Uh, as you can see here, the patient um, with any sign of edema here. Uh, and we follow the progression of the changes with the ICG at five days after surgery, we can uh, we can appreciate a stop of the dye at the axilla, as you can see here, the stop of the dye of axilla, and a little area near the scar of um, of dermal backflow with uh, with collateral circulation uh, to the contralateral axilla, as you can see here, a linear pattern and a linear pattern here uh, at the level of the hand. After uh, 
30 days uh, after surgery, we observe a linear pattern, uh, but inside, as you can see here in this picture, and um, inside the vessel, it can appreciate more fluorescent um, in separate points. As you can see, different points here uh, with more uh, fluorescent, more luminescent uh, area um, in separate points. And it's an accumulation of the dye. This is an indirect sign of the disturbance of the lymphatic motricity. And, um, and uh, here, the, the area of derma backflow became more bigger with collateral circulation at, uh, as you can see here, 90 days post uh, after the surgery. And then more bigger and more collateral circulation too. Um, it's the same, a more collateral circulation uh, to the contralateral axilla, but now at the night day uh, after the surgery, the collateral uh, circulation is from the dorsum. Uh, and for that reason, we can stimulate the derivative pathway using this type of method, the taping. Uh, it's, it's so interesting because we can, we can test with the fluorescent images the, the useful of the, this type of method, the taping. It's a complementary uh, method to the rehabilitation of the patient with lymphedema. It's very, very interesting. We have a lot of patients with, with tests with the fluorescent images and um, Dr. Marco Vecchio and Paola Shanes uh, help us to, to do this method. They, they work with the cancer case, the pioneer of the technique. And this is uh, another technique, uh, another, another patient uh, with the stage zero without any, any sign of edema uh, in this uh, young lady with the breast cancer and axillary lymph node dissection. And uh, she came uh, uh, with us, uh, um, uh, asking about the pain, the pain of the the, the pain of uh, the shoulder and uh, an area near the shoulder here, and we perform the ICG and we observe a linear pattern uh, at the distal area. As you can see here, at the level of the hands, you can appreciate the linear pattern, and at the forearm, as you can see, diffuse pattern. And near the pain, uh, near the pain area, at the pain area too, we can observe the 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 derma backflow and uh, with the with the diffuse pattern here as you can see uh the same uh diffuse pattern near uh, the scar with collateral pathway to the to the contralateral axilla uh, trying to compensate the, the the lymphatic hypertension and uh, this picture is to to understand how how we can help this type of patient with this method to stimulate the collateral the contralateral pathway using taping too, as you can see in the picture. And uh, uh, this is an advanced, advanced stage, uh, stage two of the International Society of Lymphology Classification of, of Lymphedema, the peripheral lymphedema. And you can uh, you can see a diffuse pattern as, at, the, at the level of the, at the hands with the, the um, with the stardust pattern and the, and the, uh, at the level of the arm, and uh, with uh, with um, interbreast derivative derivative pathway, uh, it's so interesting in in uh, interesting case in advanced and advanced stages. Uh, this is an stage zero two with uh, a secondary lymphedema after axillary lipoma resection. Um, we can compare the lymphocentigraphy, as you can see, the, the images of the lymphocentigraphy um, uh, without any, any type of dermal backflow. But when we develop the ICG lymphography, we appreciate the dermal backflow at the level of the hand here. And uh, a, diffuse, a diffuse pattern at the forearm and collateral circulation at the level of the neck here. It's so, so interesting uh, because we, we can find, uh, we can find any 
types of uh, flags, any 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 type of derma backflow with the lymph when, when we perform the lymphocentigraphy and we perform with the 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 ICG lymphography, it's we can detect different patterns and the collateral circulation. It's more sensitive method to detect this type at the the, the early stage two, uh, and it's it's very very interesting. And this is an interesting case of a young lady with the psoriasis, uh, uh, arthritis, uh, psoriasis arthritis and the use in immunosuppression and the development um, of lymphedema, but only at the dorsum of the left hands, as you can see here, the dorsum of the left hands. And she have some pattern, she have the, the same patterns and the strength of the situation is because uh, she have the, the same pattern uh, on the on the both hands. Uh, when when we use uh, the ICG, uh, it's but the the clinical sign of lymphedema it's only on the left uh, of the dorsum of the left uh, the left hands as you can see in the right hand we don't have uh, we, we don't have any signs any type of edema and uh, when we develop the ICG of course at the dorsum it's 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 corresponding the images because uh you can appreciate the diffuse pattern at the dorsum of the hands but here uh with any type of edema have the same patterns uh, not only at the dorsum because it's the same pattern at the palm of the 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 of the hands have a lymphatic hypertension too as you can see here it's it's so interesting uh, we don't know if the use of the inflammation of the, the, the secondary lymphedema was made by the inflammation of the arthritis psoriasis or when you when when you, the, the patient used uh, for a long time the immuno immuno uh, suppression and regarding the pressure lymph circulation and lymphedema uh, um, this concept uh, was a study for a long time with Professor Olszewski from Poland. This is an interesting concept because in the rehabilitation of, of uh, our patient, we use a lot of pressure, some schools develop or use it uh, a lot of pressure therapy. And the paradigm uh, is uh, of the pressure therapy is not to increase the pressure more than 40 millimeters of mercury, uh, because uh, have a great risk, a great risk uh, to damage the lymphatic vessel. And um, we test this patient with secondary lymphedema with fibrosis of the tissue uh, using a blood pressure cuff, and we test the pressure to move the flow. Um, and with 40 millimeter of, mer of uh, mercury we uh we can't can't move anything uh only when we increase the pressure it to 80 millimeter of mercury it's so so interesting because we can test with the calf insufflate the calf and you can see the fluorescent of the the the, the movement of the flow would increase uh, the 80 millimeter of mercury it's so so interesting to to see uh with this method And what happened, uh, um, how we can use the fluorescent images in, in a lymphatic malformation. In case of lymphatic malformation, uh, this is interesting, uh, interesting patient because we use the fluorescent images um, in, in case of intrapelvic lymphangioma. And we can combine uh, the images of the lymphocentigraphy and of course, you can uh, you can see the lymphocentigraphy. This is the patient with the intrapelvic, and you can see here the draw the picture uh, with the the intrapelvic lymphangioma, and and can uh, this score or can move to the to the level of the groin. Um, as you can see, we, we can compare the images of the lymphocentigraphy. As you can see, the lymphocentigraphy can detect uh, the, the, the lymphangioma in near the groin. And of course, uh, not, uh, not in the pelvic too. Uh, and when we perform, we, when, uh, 
here we drain the, 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 the lymphangioma at the level of the groin. And when we perform, as you can compare here, the lymphocentiography, and when we perform the uh, ICG lymphotherapy, we can detect it, the, the, the lymphangioma at the level of the groin. It's so, so interesting. Of course, the intrapelvic, it's, we can detect it because it's so deep. But at the superficial area at the groin, uh, we can detect it to two type of cysts with the connection, as you can see at the arrow here, the green arrow here, and the, the, the patient, we can draw the, uh, the, the lymphangioma at the level of the groin. Um, we, can, we can perform and, 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 uh, a cyst, a cyst venous surgery too, but it's, it's not the topic of the presentation. But we can help us to identify the, the type of the, uh, of the lymphatic malformation. This is uh, another another case on lymphangiomatosis. Uh, it's so interesting uh, the soft tissue here at the dorsum and the anterior part too, and we inject uh, uh, in one of the more biggest cysts here, as you can see in in this slide, and we inject two in a little vesicle. Uh, we perform with uh, Fernando or Fernando Deep. Uh, he helped us to to develop the the technique. And uh, here you can withdraw the the, the malformation uh, in the skin, as you can see here, the big cyst and the connection to the axilla and the connection to the groin. It's so so interesting and help us to develop the surgery to resect uh, the big cyst here. And you can see with fluorescent images the connection, uh, the big cyst here, and the connection between the axilla and the groin. As you can see here, the anterior anterior part of the connection with the, this type of malformation. Um, just a minute. Uh, in case of uh, another type of, of malformation, the clippel trenones syndrome, um, it's a combined malformation, a uh, um, venous malformation, a capillary malformation, and lymphatic malformation. Um, uh, with the use of uh, with the use of ICG, we can observe the the commitment of the lymphatic system. As you can see here, the the the, the patient with the um, um, hemorrhagia uh, lymphangiectasia, and we can detect the lymphangiectasia with the ICG here at this level. It's, it's so interesting to know more about the, the commitment of the lymphatic system in this type of malformation, a combined malformation. And just it's it's very interesting because uh, this is a, a, um, um, a different malformation, a combined malformation with primary lymphedema, peripheral lymphedema, with uh, um, uh, with protein losing enteropathy. It's it's a intestinal lymphangiectasia. It's a Balman disease, uh, in some cases combined with primary Balman disease, which was described by Balman in in 62, see the lymphedema of this young lady uh, who developed the disease at the age of 20, 25 years old. Um, and you can see the peripheral lymphedema. With, uh, we developed the capsule endoscopy, and you can see the lymphangiectasia here. It's so, so interesting. And uh, how the fluorescent images can help in the diagnosis and therapeutic of this type of patient. And we develop with, uh, um, with the unit of uh, gastroenterology of this hospital uh, with the stomach injection of the ICG with, uh, uh, at the preoperative endoscopy. And we add ICG with cream uh, and the, the, the patient eats uh, uh, 12, uh, 12 hours um, before the, the, the surgery at the preoperative by oral, of course, the patient eats, they mix it with cream, uh, with the ICG. And intraoperative, we use a, a nasogastric tube to infuse the, uh, the ICG with cream too. And we use uh, fluorescent guide laparoscopic surgery. 
and it's interesting to know more about this type of images as you can see here the 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 just a moment uh lipogranulomatose uh, lymphahitis is a, an abstraction of the lymph vessel at the intestine as you can see the superficial uh, lymphatic vessel are obstructed and inflammation obstruction and lymphangiectasia it's a, a, um, a lipid material inside the, the lymphatic vessel and become the obstruction of this type of vessel it's interesting because we we add fluorescent and the dye can in, can enter inside the vessel because have a obstruction and thrombosis with a lipid material it's also interesting as you can see here the chylosacitans and we will perform the fluorescent images as you can see the chylosacitans here the chylos leaks And the same uh, without uh, fluorescent images, of course, as you can see the, 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 the lipid material inside the vessel with obstruction, the exu exudative area with frivina here. And um, it's, it's, it's very interesting to, to see the, the, the lymph vessel at the superficial intestine, as you can see the obstruct and we perform with the, 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 the fluorescent images, the dye can enter because it's a thrombosis of the lymphatic vessels. And it's, it's very, very interesting to see uh, how it's, it's in the, the lymphatic of this area and uh, how we can help this patient with this technology. As you can see, the fluorescent images of the chylus leaks here. And when we perform the fluorescent images here, is the same images with and without fluorescent and how it uh, how uh, we can help this patient of course this is a, a malformation this is a, a very difficult uh, situation to treat of uh, this patient it's a combined malformation with a digestive malformation with a peripheral lymphedema and we only try to 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 help this patient with a palliative treatment and we perform uh, in, in the same time of surgery an omentum lymphatic transplant, as you can see here. For that reason, we inject previously by endoscopy a uh, stomach injection. And you can see here the, 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 uh, a little piece of the omentum to transplant. As uh, with microsurgery, we perform the transplant to the both sides. Of course, uh, and you can see the patient after and before. Of course, the patient continue with the 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 the, the tarry treatment uh, because it's a, a malformation too, and we don't correct the malformation just only to to help uh, with the the tarry treatment uh, to reduce the 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 kilos leak, and we help us uh, we help the the patient. Uh, uh, with the with the, the treatment of peripheral lymphedema, the patient continue with the physical treatment, of course, and a, and a non elastic uh, uh, garment too, as you, you can see here. This is uh, uh, one of the last cases uh, of uh, uh, chylos, uh, a lymph chylos leak after an nephrectomy. It's it's very interesting patient because uh he he came with us asking about the, the, the how to interrupt the the, the leaks of kilo and we perform here as you can see um we can uh, we we perform a percutaneous lymphography with, by ultrasound. We detect the, the lymph node here, and we inject a lipidol here, lipidol here, and uh, it's an oil lymphography. We at 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 the uh, as as uh, I comment at the beginning, uh, we develop the oil lymphography in special cases, in select cases. For that reason, as you can see here, we perform this type of uh, percutaneous lymphography. We detect the lymph node by ultrasound and we inject a percutaneous uh, needle inside the, the lymph node and we inject a lipidol and we get this, this type of images. As you can see the stop here, the, the dye continue with the lymph vessel and retropedial lymph vessel here and the stop here and the leaks are at the cavity as you can see the dye inside the cavity. It's a free inside the cavity, and uh, we detect the level of the the, the leaks here. And 
um, we perform this type of, of, of procedure. We combine the fluorescent images and like the same patient, we combine the, the, the ICG uh, with cream and mix it with cream uh, and uh, use the nasogastric tube uh, intraoperative. And we perform the same technique, uh, the percutaneous uh, lymphography, but not with uh, a lipidol. We use the ICG intraoperative. And we perform the lymph uh, lymphography with the ICG to detect the, the fluorescent dye inside the cavity. And for that reason, we combine the, uh, this technique uh, with uh, uh, fluorescent dye laparoscopic surgery. As you can see, a little, uh, just a moment, oh, here, a little video because it's, it's too long. But uh, here, we can, we can do it again. Uh, you can see here the, the leaks with fluorescent images here um, is to, to, to remember the anatomy at the level of the, the, the leaks. It's, it's in there here, it's anatomy specimen of the thoracic duct. As you can see, the two lum lumbar trunk and the, level, the, the, the die enter because the, the lumbar trunk, uh, trunks come uh, um, follow the, the, the flow of the lymph um, node at the groin and we inject the ICG at the groin level and the, the dye come from here and combine with the, the trunk, uh, gastrointestinal trunk at the retroperitoneal area and this is the level of the leaks near here and just to remember the anatomy. Uh, Okay, as you can see here, with or and without fluorescent images, the lymphatic vessel here, with, we detect the, the, the leaks of the lymph vessel of the leaks uh, with the fluorescent. As you can see, the same color, it's impossible to detect uh, the lymph vessel without fluorescence. It's so, so interesting because uh, we clip this, uh, when we stop the leakage immediately of the, the, the surgery, after surgery. Just to final, I take a home message, uh, a near-infrared fluorescence uh, is useful to understand early physiopathological changes of the lymphatic system after a primary or secondary damage. Um, the early lymphatic disease is treated, uh, the more that can be done to prevent its progression. And a near infrared fluorescent can detect a chylos or, or lymph leaks used in an open surgery or laparoscopic surgery. It's depend of the anatomy concept. And finally, in some cases, the, the surgery can stabi stabilize the lymph circulation as a palliative treatment. And I would like to thanks to to all people here, Fernando Deep uh, is my mentor in the, the ICG technology, uh, technology, the fluorescent imaging, Raul Rosenden from Cleveland Clinic 2, Sandra Jerez of the military, it's, it, the team of the, of the, my unit in the hospital, uh, Dr. Bengoa, Marco Vecchio, Castro Salvia, Paola Giannis, uh, uh, Florencia Secchi, Oscar Gural from Favalero Foundation, my, my other place to, of work, and uh, the other of my mentor is uh, Professor Papendiek, uh, and Maria Gomez, uh, the assistant of Angel, Angel Beadier Foundation. Thank you very much. And um, I think that we must move to question and answer. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And we have got lots of questions in. Um, our first question that we have today, um, a question is saying, could you comment on where and how much ICG you need to inject to visualize the thoracic duct? Yes, it's it's depend, uh, but usually uh, to see the the, the, the thoracic duct uh, maybe um, 
just it's it's depend the the type of of, of problem or malformation or the damage of the lymphatic system. If uh, if we perform by in a, every web space, we use usually we use 0.5 milliliter of ICG in, in every web space. And if we perform uh, internodal lymph lymphography with the ICG, um, it's depend. But usually in, in with the same uh, with the double of doses of uh, that we use in, at, at the level of the the fit. Uh, um, uh, usually in five to ten minutes, we can observe the fluorescent images uh, at the level of the thoracic duct. Thank you very much. And another question here. Could you please comment on the use of the lymphatic venous by bypass in severe, in severe lymphedema in a severely obese subject? Uh, it's, the question is about the, the, the surgery, the uh, lymphatic venous anastomosis. Yes, correct. Yes, I, I try to don't uh, explain more about that because uh, uh, Professor Macia from Barcelona um, have a, 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 the concept of the the, the use of uh, fluorescent imaging in, in the surgery. But usually we can. It's it's so it's so interesting to see uh, inside the surgery. And we use a lot of the, the, the fluorescent images to detect the superficial lymphatic, and to know more about the, the, this type of uh, the, the type of uh, physiology of this type of vessel to 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 detect and to help us to develop the anastomosis. Because as I say at the beginning, we can detect uh, a different type of, of lymphatic vessel. It depends the progression of lymphedema. Of course, for me, the, the best, and for all, the best, uh, um, uh, the best uh, patient to develop the, the, the anastomosis is in the early in, in the early stages, and for that reason, we we must to do it in a very very early stages in some center around the world, uh, around the around the world, uh, like in Italy, the the the. The, the unit of Dr. Campisi and Dr. Bocardo develop uh, inside the, the the surgery after lymphadenectomy, and it, it's so interesting to use it in in early stages of lymphedema. And we can see the the, the pattern of the of the the patency of the of the lymphatic venous anastomosis. But Thank you very the, the, much. The, the, the aim of the presentation is not to, to develop in, in, in lymphedema surgery. Just I, I, I touch a little, a little things about the lymphatic disorder, the lymphatic malformation. Thank you very much. Um, another question. In some of your earlier slides, you were using a handheld camera, and we've had a couple of um, questions saying that they're curious which uh, handheld IC. What camera? You were using a handheld camera, um, yes. and they were and they were wondering what type of handheld camera you were using in those images because they've been having trouble sourcing one that is affordable. Yes, uh, uh, the, the type of the camera of the hand camera it's uh, it's the ICG flow. It's uh, it's the, the camera that we use it uh, in in the unit. And uh, it's very easy to 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 do it, uh, and very easy to to, to manage the camera. Uh, it's it's uh, the, the name is IDG Flow. It's it's if if you ask about this, uh, it's it's the IDG Flow. Uh, it's the camera of the unit. Thank you for that clarification. Um, a question here saying, what background levels of ambient light are necessary? Uh, the, uh, sorry, it's about the, the the ambient. Sorry, the um they're saying what background levels of ambient light are necessary when? Ah, okay, yes. Uh, it's um, we we develop in an office without uh, without any type of light because we need the the, the dark to 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 develop the 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 type of. Uh, 
of uh, ICG lymphography. Uh, when you when you have a, a little like the 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 sensitive of the the camera, it it's not good. We we must to develop in the dark, uh, in the in the dark area in the dark office to, to develop to more sensitive uh, uh, method or more sensitive images uh, to get the better images. You must to to dark the the ambient. Thank you very much. And a question here. How do you envisage the future of this technology? Uh, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, uh, I think that it's a revolution to, to it's a revolution of, of this technique to, to apply to the lymphatic system because I come from the anatomy and I'm professor of anatomy at the Buenos Aires University uh, and I, I, I have a, a, a research a lab of the lymphatic anatomy and for me uh, when we applied uh, the ICG is the same you can see the same uh, finding of the, the the specimen it's so so interesting to see the lymphatic vessel with the ICG camera with the ICG flow in real time and you can you can appreciate uh, I, I can I can show uh, uh, a lot of video but you can appreciate when you use uh, the ICG flow the the flow the movement of the lymph it's for me it's exciting because because uh, you can see the same that the specimen the lymph vessel but we add when you use a live specimen or live patient of course the patient uh we 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 see the movement of the lymph it it's for me it's 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 uh, very very interesting and we add the technology with other malformation or the lymphedema it's it's in normal condition you can see uh, the flow inside the lymph vessel it's it's so interesting of course it's the superficial lymph vessel but uh, the 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 lymphedema it's it's regarding the damage of the superficial vein uh, the superficial lymphatic vessel uh, it's so so interesting i think that for the future it's it's uh, we must to to do it all all uh, physician who who work with uh lymphedema we must to do it uh, this type of procedure uh, i think that it's it's the best of course we usually add uh, other method like lymphocentrifuge because all of my patients have a lymphocentrifuge too because uh, we combine uh, the method to know more about it depending the, the, the patient but uh, for me it's more sensitive for the superficial uh, lymphatic vessel the, the ICG technology and then they are in for the fluorescent images but we can combine the technique uh, I, I, uh, for me it's it's the best but uh, we usually we add other method uh, magnetic resonance to lymphography uh, and oil lymphography too in special cases uh, lymphocentrifuge uh, we, we work a lot with lymphocentrifuge we, we, we can see the deep uh, lymphatic system and uh, more about the physiopathological changes too but it's more deeper and only you can see with the lymphocentrifuge only type only one type of uh, uh, reflux of the dermal back flow and, uh, and when we use uh, the ICG, the near infrared fluorescent images, you can represent different type of, uh, uh, of dermal backflow. And it's dependent the progression of lymphedema. For the reason, I think that it's it's more sensitive to detect the early changes of the lymphatic system. Thank you very much. And we've had a couple of questions in about the um, presentation. We are recording today's session and that will be shared with all of our attendants after the webinar. And being conscious of time, um, we have got lots of questions that we haven't had time to get to, but we'll just take one more question here. Um, we have a question here from um, a surgical oncologist in the um, Panama Republic. And they're asking how could they implement the technology in their country? Uh, uh, it's just we work uh, for a long time uh, trying to develop uh, inside our, or our hospital. Uh, we, as I mentioned, Fernando Fernando Deep, uh, who now is the president of, of uh, the Fluorescent uh, Guide Surgery. Uh, 
society and help us to develop the, the technique to develop the, the ICG lymphography. Um, and now we can work together and uh, Fernando was my mentor in this technique. But uh, usually it's uh, maybe it's, 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 it's expensive at the beginning, but uh, the results uh, of the method it's so so interesting and I think that it, it, it's important to to give an opportunity to to do it uh, the company help uh, the the hospital to to develop the technology and uh, we we combine the the use of hand camera in the unit of lymphology and lymphology unit uh, in the hospital and combine with the with the uh, inside the, the the surgery with the laparoscopic surgery too, with the use of fluorescent and images, it's too so expensive. But the result, I think, that in the future, all of unit of of a surgical unit, we must to to develop this type of technique to reduce the risk uh, of 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 patient. Uh, and of course, the, the fluorescent images uh, can apply to other type of of of, uh, of surgery. Uh, and, and all, all of the unit can can implement the, the, the Florence image. I think that it's the future to do it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your presentation. And thank you to all of our audience for joining us. Um, we have captured all of the questions, so we will be able to follow up with you after the webinar. Once you leave the webinar today, you will receive a survey on the presentation. So we would be grateful if you could keep your browser window open for a couple of minutes and complete that and provide your feedback for us. You will also receive, as I mentioned, a follow up email within 24 to 48 hours that will include a link to the recording of today's webinar. Once again, Dr. Amore, thank you so much for your presentation and answering the questions. On behalf of the International Society of Fluorescent Guided Surgery with grant funding from Diagnostic Green and our presenter, thank you so much for joining us and please do all enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you very much. <laughs>